man, ladies and gentlemen, the streak continues. Caps win 4-3 against the Boston Bruins in overtime. And it really shouldn't have gone to overtime, but it did go to overtime. But it doesn't matter because Ovechkin's back. 10 days of COVID protocol and all that stuff and the shoots and scores and game over and bah! Whew, that was too much too fast. I'm not gonna make it through the video if I keep it at that pace. The Caps just don't stop ceasing to amaze me and blow my mind and excite me. Another wacky roller coaster of a game and I guess that's just turning out to be what this season is. There's really, really high points and there's really, really low points and there's a lot of in-between points and there's a lot of angry points at the refs, uh, this game. And then there's a lot of points where it's like, Nothing's really happening, and who knows how to feel when you're going through that wide array of emotions in a 60-minute game. But before I go any further and I talk about anything in this game, we have to recognize what just happened tonight. Alexander Ovechkin scored his 708th goal of his career, and that ties him for 7th place all-time with Mike Gardner on the NHL all-time goal leading list. We could be witnessing history almost week by week at this point this season. He is so close to the next two guys on that list, he could be passing the likes of Mike Esposito and Marcel Dion this season. And with a really good season, he could even get as high as Brett Hall. That's right, Brett Hall. That's 741 goals. He could have a fantastic rest of his season and pass Brett Hall. Do, do you, do you, do you grasp the magnitude of what we are witnessing right now? It, it is mind blowing. And if you are not on board with how amazing this is that we're watching right now, I don't know what to tell you and I can't help you. And he makes it look so easy. He's just three on three overtime and drop past Ovechkin. He comes streaking into the zone. It's a one on three and he just rips it past Rask. Rask didn't even see it. He didn't move. He didn't know it was going to go past. Uh, it is history in the making, ladies and gentlemen. It is something that we will tell our children and grandchildren about when they are watching the Caps 40 years from now. But anyway, this game was, oh, this game was nerve wracking. I tell you what, I, I, Oh, why do the Caps keep doing this to me? Last game, they go down three goals, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, great, here we go again. And then they come out with six unanswered goals. Then they start this game with three unanswered goals. Mind you, that's nine unanswered goals in the past two games. They had a streak there of nine unanswered goals. That's almost unprecedented. But then slowly but surely, the Bruins just start uh, clawing their way back into the game. And part of me really wants to blame the rest because there were some terrible, terrible blown calls here. Not even just like bad calls, but bad non-calls. And I, I don't mind light calls sometimes, like maybe a light holding call or a light tripping call. But if you're gonna do it, do it evenly, do it both ways. But I guess that's kind of the fan experience with any sport. I guess every sport you're gonna have a situation where you don't feel like a game was called evenly. And I feel like I'm allowed to say it wasn't called evenly this time because we ended up winning and it's different than losing and being like, oh, it's the rest fault and we, we won. And so, but we can also say that the rest are bad, right? Like that's a thing, right? Anyway, the Caps take us on a roller coaster of a game yet again. And they had a really iffy first period. Like it could have easily been 3-0 Boston at the end of that first period. But ladies and gentlemen, VTech Vanatek comes up huge again. VTech Vanatek, the check in net, just because I have to say it at this point. Seriously, his fantastic game started from almost the very beginning and went the entire game. From about not even five minutes in, when a hard wraparound comes around, he gets behind his net to play it and it takes just the awkwardest bounce out of the corner, right into the front of the ice. And I don't know how Krejci misses that. It's just a wide open net. But VTech comes sliding back into this crease and just makes a stellar save. And from that moment on, he was great the entire game yet again. I mean, who saw this coming three weeks ago, three months ago, when we knew we were gonna lose Braden Holpe and we had a big question mark as to what was gonna happen in net for the Caps this season. Nobody knew that VTech Vanatech was gonna just step up and just take this team on his back and carry them to a nine game point streak to start the season. That is just, 
the best thing about this entire situation. When regulation ended, I wasn't even upset. Okay, that's not right to say because I actually was upset. It's you get a pull goalie goal and it's oh, it's so frustrating, especially when it's down in the crease and everyone's smacking away at it and it just happens to get smacked in and it's not VTech's fault and you just you hate to see that happen. But I'm sitting there waiting for overtime to start, thinking we got a point. That is a nine game point streak. The Caps have yet to lose in regulation to start this season. That has never happened in franchise history before. Once again, we are witnessing history. This is an amazing time to be a Caps fan. What a time to be alive, folks. These are just the moments that we live for as Caps fans, and they just keep on coming. And it makes it so easy to be a Caps fan right now. It makes it so easy to watch your team play night in and night out and just cheer them on as hard as you possibly can, knowing that even if they do lose, which is inevitable, they will end up losing a game this season. But even when they do, it's so comforting to know that so many good moments are happening to us right now. Moments, that's, that's, I think that's what I'm gonna call this episode, moments. It's all about the moments that you see. And a big moment happened tonight with Ovechkin scoring his 708th goal, but a lot of other little moments happen that you can't pass up as well. Backstrom opens the scoring for the Caps this season and talk about a consistent for the Caps for the past 15 years. This guy, the most underrated center in the entire NHL by far, like leaps and bounds and just miles ahead of anyone else. The most underrated center in the entire NHL. This guy, does not get nearly as many accolades as he ever should. Never has he gotten it, and he always should be getting praise. He scores his fifth goal of the season. Five goals in nine games. Trevor Van Riemsdyk, TVR, scores his first goal as a Washington Capitol tonight. What a great moment that is. What a great moment to see so many outside guys. I say outside guys because they're not you know, the core group of guys that we've seen pay for the past you know, decade. Outside guys getting on the score sheet, scoring goals and getting assists and being part of the play and just being a part of the team. The camaraderie that I'm seeing on this team right now is astronomical. When Ovechkin scored that overtime goal and the bench clears and they go celebrate with him, you watch the replay. Chara, who is like two feet taller than everyone else, <laughs> he his interaction with Ovechkin is it's just beautiful. It's, in my opinion, captain to captain. Even though he's not the captain of the Washington Capitals, he's a captain at heart. He's captain of the Bruins for 14 years or whatever it was. It's a captain to captain a moment saying, wow, man, what a fantastic way to take the mantle up and just carry the team with you and just win it and just show these guys what being a leader is all about. Wait way to do it. Those little moments, those three second little moments here and there stacked on top of monumental moments like your captain tying the seventh all-time goals. It just, it warms your heart and it makes you love the game even more. Was this game perfect for the Washington Capitals? Absolutely not. Far from perfect. But guess what? They won. And like I said last video, that is their mantra right now. Grind away and find a way to win. Next man up and find a way to win. It doesn't matter, find a way to win. And that's what teams have to do in the playoffs. And the Caps are starting to figure that out right now. And that bodes really well for the Washington Capitals for the next, oh shoot, 56 minus nine, 49 games. Oh wait, that's not right. 56 minus nine, okay, 47 games. It's late, I've been drinking, I'm filming, whatever. Moments, people. Moments is all I have to say about this right now. Enjoy the moments that are coming at us because they are going to be coming at us and they're gonna be coming at us in a copious amount. And it is our job as Cavs fans to live in those moments, to soak them in, to enjoy them, to document them and to remember them because they're going to last forever. And we get to enjoy them now. And that is the beautiful, beautiful aspect of being a Washington Capitals fan in 2021. But what do I know? I'm just a fan. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. And if you enjoyed your time here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you come back. And as always, let's go Caps!